Hello, I'm Charlie Class. Fifteen years ago, the word sustainability, no one was saying. Today, it's become every corner of the earth we hear sustainability. What's the focus on sustainability? It could be a lot of things, but we're looking at our natural resources, water, air. They must go on forever. If they don't, we won't be here anymore. It's the focus on the planet. The guest tonight has painted the largest painting of sustainability in the world. It's 24 feet long by 5 feet high. And I know that you know this gentleman from previous shows. He is my co-host, Michael Killen. Michael? Hi, Charlie. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for what you're going to do tonight. Well, it's a, 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 the topic is phenomenal. There's no question about it. Sustainability, how did you get the idea to paint this enormous painting, 24 feet long? Well, I have painted a series of paintings on climate change, and apparently an executive at NASA saw them. And he sent me an email, and he sent an email to, I don't know, Central Command saying, we ought to retain Michael to make a painting for our new building, which is called Sustainability Base. And that led to me making the painting Sustainability Base. So here you were presented with a challenge. Yes. Did they say make something 24 feet long? No. What did they tell you? Just make well, a painting, period. Yes, and they gave me a tour of their unfinished building. Uh -huh. And an executive led the tour, and he shared that you know, this has become their passion to make a building that will use very little water, very little energy, and that will become an exemplar, they hope, for the rest of the nation to get the nation thinking more and more about making buildings that are sustainable, that use very little energy, very little water. That's all, all right. they told me. So that wasn't much to go on, was it? Uh, so suddenly you're presented with this. How did you begin, how did your mind begin to work to put this together? Oh, okay. Uh, they, they shared one other thing. All right. Is that they are bringing technology and insights that they developed for space travel down to the earth. Ah, for for example, water purification systems. All right. And then some, some of the intellectual things. How did my mind work? Well, the first thing was I said to myself, God, how do you paint sustainability? And I, I tried to think about what, it, what is it? And you know, the first thing that came to mind, it's something goes on forever and ever. And if something goes on forever and ever and there's no change, this is a very static thing. And for example, you don't want to write a book about something that's static. You don't want to write a play or, or a play or do a play when nothing happens. And you know, to make a painting about something that in a way you could say nothing happens leads to a painting that would not be of any interest because a painting, in my opinion, must sweep the eye and the mind all over the place. So it was a, a challenge to, to come up with ideas for how to make a painting that was alive. That was alive. Ah, so you're putting action into uh, it. Oh, yes. This, this is, that was the key. That got you started. Yes. You had to have activity, things going on, because in order to continue to keep our water clean, our air clean, uh, reduce the carbon, and so forth, all these were activities that required a lot of action. Because if we sit here, the planet will just disappear, or we will, from the planet. Yes, and um, I, I was wondering, uh, could you just show for a second or two maybe the, the total painting? Yeah, we, if we, you have, like. we have. Or, or, or you have done that already, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, we're way ahead of you, Michael. All right, so I want to share, you know, when you take on a painting like this, you know, I, I, I always, in the past, have always made paintings for the most part that are six foot long, five foot high. That's your standard format, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. But when NASA got me excited about making a painting, I, I said to myself, 
wait a second, sustainability is such a crucial thing and, and so pervasive. You know, it is the only, in my opinion, viable solution to climate change. Okay. Okay. And 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 then I was thinking about you know how important sustainability is for all of us around the world. You know, I started to say six foot isn't enough. And then when I was thinking about NASA, which is truly one of the United States' most important assets, okay? And they're big. And I said to myself, gee, this cannot be six feet. And then I said, well, how about 12 feet? And then I'd say, <laughs> well, what would be the content? And I still didn't have it. And then I started to think about what would the content be? And, and I think you have to have clear thinking you know, before you can undertake something like this and know how big it is. So I suddenly, after thinking for a while, said, wait a second, sustainability is about using the wind. And okay. I said to myself, maybe six, six feet for the wind. And then it's about using thermal energy, another renewable source, okay. another six feet. And then I said, solar, the sun is important, another six feet. And, and I knew I could get water into those three, six foot, 18 feet. And then I said, you know, since NASA said to me, they are so intent now in helping us on the earth with this problem of climate change and, and, to, and the need to promote sustainable practices, I said, well, maybe I should have another six feet devoted symbolically to NASA in effect landing on the earth and bringing its perspective and its technology that it developed for a, a real rigorous environment, you know, space down here to help us. So I, that led to 24 feet. So you modularized and picked the key elements that you felt and that's, that's how it came together. Is this what do you think about going back in your paintings? I'd like to go back if sure. I may. Sure. Let's go back to when you first started. You did a, a, a wonderful painting about Katrina and the aftermath and the government not really following through with what they were supposed to do. And, and also part of it was the fact that the levees broke. They're going to replace the same levee. No, no. It, took, it was time to do much more to protect the city. And this was one of the early paintings that you did that got into well, sort of a political bent. Yes, and I, and I decided it was the beginning of me making paintings that have a message. And I had done some paintings where I tried to depict time. I, I know Salvador Dali that did a wonderful work, The Persistence of Time. And I did a painting called I didn't see the time go by, which is something that all of us, as we get older and older, see. And, and then I evolved to the Katrina, which became my first social message. I was painting not to give the world, the public, something that was pretty, but, but I wanted it to be pretty. But I also wanted, when people looked at it, they would think, they'd realize there's some kind of message. And I thought that our, you know, our government let us down totally. And I, I thought it, I would do my little bit to help assure that the next administration was more sensitive to the plight, the needs of Americans when a disaster occurs. Right. That sort of led you into uh, your, your basically symbolic pictures of all the problems that existed. Uh, one, I recall, instead of painting a bunch of smokestacks that we all are aware, oh, that's pollution. You, pu <laughs> you put a person up on top of the smokestack uh, yeah. <laughs> and suffocated them. Yeah, no, well, uh, no, well, I was thinking they, they were being barbecued on top of a yeah. smokestack. A and that was for a climate change series that I was making. But I, I know you came over to my studio and saw it, but it didn't survive. That painting did not survive because... Uh, it, it just, it had a message, but it was too raw, you might say. Okay, and, all right. But, but you see, this is something that we had talked over a number of years about physicists 
said to you that you need to do something that we can't do. You need to involve the public. You need to get, we can talk forever. They don't understand our language. We're very shy about saying things and so forth. But you make a very strong message through the painting. And a combination of what they say and what you paint makes things come together. Yeah, they have the verbal language and this language of science. And I admire them for it. And I listen to them very carefully. I have the language of art, the visual. And just about everything I'm doing in terms of making paintings are for the academic, the scientific, the uh, government agencies to help them with the painting, with art exhibitions, to bring attention to their fine work. And I think that they have recognized that's exactly what you're doing. It's a combination of both. So I want to talk about one more painting and then we can move on. And that is a very frightening one about starvation throughout the world. Oh, sure. Oh, yes, I made a painting called Population Explosion. And it was inspired by the work of Paul Ehrlich and, and a man who came before him. And you know, the UN forecasts that until 2050, I believe the population will keep growing and then it may level off and who knows, it might go down. And, and of course, the Earth is a finite entity and more and more people are taking up more and more space and this is taxing food, natural resources, including the atmosphere. And, you know, it, it just a little bit of looking into the future. You know, if the population keeps ex increasing, it's like just one house on, a, on, on the planet. That's going to fill up. And it's going to be it's going to be difficult for people to find shelter, water. Well, water is going to probably kill us. And so then, with food becoming scarce, my painting depicted a, a little baby child sitting on a table with a big knife next to them and a whole bunch of starving people yeah, <laughs> around yeah, that, them. That was all, <laughs> almost like cannibalism. Yeah. Believe me, that got my attention immediately, and I'm sure hundreds of people. That's what went into your mind when you saw the painting. That's what I saw. Cannibalism. And in one of the venues, one of the places where I showed that painting, uh, the people who building it was came to me and said, you know, people are starting to get really anxious about looking <laughs> at that painting. And only because it, somebody else is building their house, I agree to remove it and put a different but painting But that shows in. the power of what you were doing, the problems. That was your whole first area of paintings were problems. The sustainability is the first one of solution. Yes, yes. So I did about seven paintings on climate change, partly for myself to get a good understanding of different aspects and impacts that climate change will have on it and to try to get a feel for what the problem is and also to verify for myself that this was real and, and not like what some parts of the population say that this is something contrived by the government and the scientists mm. to control us or some other fanatical thing. And, and, and as I worked on this, making the paintings, I learned, and it, God, it's obvious that climate change is one of the greatest threats we've ever faced. And then I started naturally thinking about what would be solutions I could paint. And then at that moment, NASA came rocketing in. The timing that. was perfect. Yeah. What I'd like to do is work our way into the first panel. Now, this is Kay. depicted in, I think, uh, four panels. Yes. And so we're going to study the first panel yeah. and explain what, what you're, right. what you're, you're okay. seeing. Okay. I think that's a, a, a so, good way to go. So I designed this painting. So here we go. Uh, is a 24-foot painting, but in six-foot panels that can stand alone. This is the first panel. So if you're looking at the entire painting, starting on your left, this is what you see. And what you see is what you see and imagine. But for me, this was my way of articulating the wind, the power of the wind. And I'll have to give a little hint. If you look up in the right-hand corner, you see uh, a white and green sail. 
And in my little simple thinking, when the wind blows, it drives energy down the mass, and the mass morphs in this particular painting into possibly a horse. And I sort of like painting sort of somewhat of an abstract horse because we're all familiar with horse power. Right, right, that's good. Just one thing before we take this panel down is there's an obvious uh, geographical location. We see the Golden Gate Bridge and the Hoover Tower. Right, and then yeah, a place, and then to the right of it, and it's not too clear, uh, there's an arm and a hand sort of holding down three little balls. That's a symbol for carbon dioxide. Okay, all right. I think that, that was, that's good, and that's our first panel. So let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the other ideas, and we'll get to the next panel in a, in a minute or so. Uh, the, the, the idea, so did this, you mentioned before, well, I'm sort of reviewing, you had the wind. You knew the water would be going through all the panels. You had the, what, what other energy? Thermal. Thermal. You had the thermal. Uh, and solar. And solar. Yeah. And, and so this, this combined here. Right. And so you were able to almost separate these. At the same time, if I, when I stop and look at the painting, I've seen it, I, my first thing is a, an overview. But it's so big, it's almost impossible yes. to do an overview. So you literally have to start taking it apart, taking it into pieces. And that, that's kind of what we're doing now is breaking it down. So I think it would be good. Maybe should we do another Let, let's panel? Let's do another one, Yeah, yes. I think it would be good to bring up another panel. And <laughs> what this one is about is it's many, many different things. And on the left, there's a building, you know, in the United States, the world, there's many buildings. And today, we have to think of them as dumb buildings. They just use up so much energy. And many of them are still full of incandescent lamps and lighting. And in that brown building on the left, we see one incandescent lamp and a wire, that white wire that goes down. And in my thinking, that wire is going down, and uh, it's it leads into a, a massive pit of coal. And now, uh, on the right, uh, three quarters of the painting is what I think of as a uh, sort of a part of a building that's being constructed. And uh, we have thermal energy and on the, the left down on the bottom, and we can't see it too well, we have two lovers. They're in red, and one of their arms go, goes up in the air, and it's attached to one of these compact fluorescent lights, which are just wonderful for all of us, because we get good light, and we reduce the amount of energy we use. And the me reason I have these two lovers as thermal energy, because lovers make heat, OK? And in this particular painting, we are measuring carbon footprint. And I haven't finished this yet. And we have two persons who are studying a printout where they're when I finish it, they will be studying issues or people or developments that they are focusing on and we all should focus on. There'll be a smart meter in there, an abstract one. Okay. All a lot right. of That's things. All right. Uh, we should come back for a little bit and then we'll get to the next one. Why don't you talk a little bit about what we're going to see on the next panel? What we're going to see, if I can remember. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I had this thought that also ran through this painting that NASA was building the most energy efficient building in the entire federal system. So that influenced me to, and here was the movement now, people moving as part of the process of building a very, very modern, highly energy efficiency building. And so that allowed me to put a couple of people in carrying a big solar panel. And what else did it allow me to do? I can't remember. That's OK. Well, we, can, we can take a look at it now. I think you sort of set the tone to, to uh, get a look. Here we go. Oh, yes. So we have a couple of people. You know, they're people. And they're going up a ramp carrying a solar panel. It's part of this building that's being constructed. And you can see part of it behind them. And then also, 
uh, we have a person who is holding a, a, a jar and water is coming down. And you can't see the sponge too well into a sponge or into a kidney because kin kidneys are filtering process. And that person is basically, in my mind, carrying some space technology for purifying water. And at that person's feet, when I finish it, we'll have the symbol for recycling because you know, we need to recycle almost everything from now on and we need to adopt processes and thinking of cradle to cradle. And so when people look at that, uh, that round thing at the foot, uh, it'll help get, make people think about, oh yes, we should have our children, our parents recycling things. And then on the right, the very far right, uh, it's hard to see a bit. There is, you know, it's going to be the women and the children that are going to suffer most around the world as uh, our resources continue to be stretched. So there is a abstract woman, and uh, and then below her, I I was thinking that great people are going to emerge. And in some cases, you know, it's the NASA people and people like NASA. And there, you can see uh, just a couple of hands where a person is putting a brain on a table. Because we're going to have to have a lot, use a lot of brain power to uh, make sure we okay, all another, prosper another in this new. Okay. okay, so we have one more panel to go. Oh, yes. And, uh, you want to set it up a little bit? Okay. Here, I'm influenced by what I think NASA is trying to do. They're trying to land, in effect, on the Earth and bring technology and thinking that they have used to go to the moon and, and do things that no man has ever done before. So apply it back apply instead it. of out somewhere right here where right. we live. To okay. help us in the United States and in other countries, make sure we do not destroy the life support systems that this planet needs. Okay, let's, so, uh, it, I think you've set it up. Here we are. Okay, and so on the very top, uh, that's a saucer. And, you know, I'm sure the NASA people, when they look at this and they say, God, that's a kitchen saucer up there with a cup on it. But, you know, with me, everything is symbolic. And so it's a kitchen saucer, and it's a cup. And on the side of the cup, there's an eagle looking out of a window on the cup. And the eagle's there because we all know the famous phrase, the eagle, eagle has, has landed, landed. Yeah, historic okay. phrase. And, and to the right, you, you can see this black, let's call it an arm, a pipe that's reaching out. Now, this is the movement aspect. That arm is capturing water, maybe okay. rain. And, and let's just say it's not purified at all. It's capturing that water, and that water goes through that black pipe, and it just sweeps across the, the page, across the six-foot panel. And notice the water comes out the other side. And that's, again, part of this process of showing movement. And I'm, I'm a firm believer that probably the best symbolic s symbol that exists for articulating sustainability is the infinity sign with and, possibly. And that's what we have there, yes. So there I made uh, in a, two holes in the ground that have no bottom. And they are the two together make up the uh, mathematical symbol infinity. And to me, climate change and even sus sustainability is all about the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. We have to practice right. sustainable practices, or those kids aren't even going to get a chance to skate on that. Good. Let's come back to this whole program. Now, this is really exciting. What's happening related to this 24-foot painting? What, where's it going <laughs> to go? Well, I am just delighted that... Uh, the coming week, I will announce the coast-to-coast -coast tour of the world's largest painting on sustainability. And the tour starts not on the Atlantic and heads west, but it's going to start in the great state of California at 
one of the most advanced cities in the nation and that really cares about sustainability, and that's Palo Alto. So it's going to spend a month in Palo Alto, and then I am extremely pleased that the county of Santa Clara County, that's a county that has 1.7 million people. It's Silicon Valley. It has the heart of Silicon Valley. The county uh, folks who in the sustainability office and Demetra O'Bride and Charlene Larson both decided that they wanted my painting to be on display for a month in the lobby. And the commissioners of the county, all those folks are, well, are just getting ready wonderful. for a big event. We're, we're down to just a couple of minutes, so keep going. And then, although NASA hasn't given me the date, I am quite sure they're going to do it. It is going to NASA in California, and then it's going to get shipped to Florida, and then we'll be right at the, uh, we have a venue at uh, Wales Lake Art Center in Wales Lake, Florida, and it'll be there. And I'm starting to talk to folks in Miami, St. Petersburg, and other pl places about them taking the painting. Well, this is only the beginning of the tour. Uh, this is what you know about it so far. Yes, and two days ago, uh, a European-based person is very familiar with European based, was sitting down with me and starting to plan a European tour that includes Sweden, Holland, Ireland, and Brussels and for the, later next year. Wow, uh, that's amazing. It, it, it's really exciting, all of these things, all of these energies that you've put in the culmination of your first 24-foot painting. Uh, That's yes. what we're really, I want to thank you very much for uh, sharing this very exciting tour. Michael, it's good to have you aboard again. You were kind. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. You bet. Michael Killen, Charlie Class.